Hello guys, we are in Rennes St Jacques Airport to the west of France. Upon building this tile, I had a look around and decided that it needs more house. We should fix that. Welcome to Ali on Games, I am Ali and today I'm going to talk to you about making custom overlays using world to explain in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of resources that will assist you in creating your own custom overlay. First, I will show you the bbbike.org OSM website and how to obtain OSM extracts from it. And then I'll show you the world to explain program and how it's used to create amazing overlays. May your sim never be void of fake civilization again. Okay guys, so now as I said, the first step that I'm going to take you through is the bbbike.org's website for um, OSM data extracts in the file format of PBF. Um, basically these are the types of files that uh, W2XP uses to extract the information required to know where to place all of your road networks and all of your houses and you know any sort of like landmark spots and bridges and all this kind of stuff without these files where well, you're not going to be able to use your scenery at all and of course that would make w2xp completely useless to you now as i said we were in the rainy saint uh saint jacques area uh which is here um i don't know exactly where the airport is but that's rainy there and uh what i'm going to do is obviously i'm building france at the moment in my own sim so I'm going to um, I'm going to capture a good chunk of France so that I don't have to worry about the overlay that I'm going to put on my scenery for a little while at least. So I'm going to start from the west side and um, take maybe a quarter to a half of France at a time. Now the reason why I'm not going to do it all at once is because there are there are some limitations uh, as to how much you can extract at any one time. Um, the restrictions are a file size and or a area of, you know, the map, like a so however many kilometers squared. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, I just clicked on the, the button there that would allow me to obviously get the zone up here. Uh, this zone represents the area of data that I'm looking to capture. As you can see already, it's saying that uh, for the protocol buffer, which is at the top there, uh, area is too large. Uh, 1536 megabytes maximum. Um, and obviously, uh, we need to make this area smaller so that we can allow the extract to actually be processed. So uh, I'm going to move the center of the box somewhere around about here. So we're covering France for the most part. Now you might be looking at this and going, oh, but Ali, like so much of that space that you're using right there, I mean, you're capturing some of England there, you've got Switzerland and Liechtenstein, you've got Luxembourg and Belgium and some of Germany, the top of Spain. You've got a lot of data there that you don't need if you're just looking for France. And you're absolutely right. And there's a way that we can reshape this area so that we can more efficiently uh, fill up the file size with the information that we really need and eliminate the stuff that we don't. I'm going to show you how. Basically click here, uh, add points to polygon, and we click on the box and that makes it inactive again. We click on it once more and you'll see it's different. We no longer have the circle, the uh, center handle for the box. We have a bunch of handles around the outside. And these handles around the outside allow us to manipulate the shape of the area that we're looking to capture um, OSM data from, like this. So I'll just bring that here, just northwest of Brest, and yes, I giggled there too. Um, and uh, what we can do is whenever we uh, manipulate handles, more, like more than the second handle in the shape, we immediately get additional handles to get a slightly more higher resolution on the area uh, that we're actually looking to capture here. So we're not limited to just the six handles for the entire process. But I'm going to go up here, up to the northwest coast of France, and uh, just keep placing around the coast. I am going slightly further past the coastline, as you can see, into some of the water. And the reason for that is there could be little islands and stuff that are not actually showing up on this map very well. So um, it's kind of nice to kind of uh, make sure you're getting all the information that you can while you can. Uh, okay, so we're coming up to the top of France. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, continue doing this for a little bit and I'll come back to you once I've finished the shape. 
Okay guys, so there you have it. I've basically um, managed to capture, I'd say, about a third, I think, of France altogether. There's still a lot of landmass here that I'll have to get in another shot. We have a maximum in this case of 960 megabytes for the file. We're using 956, so I think we're doing a good job there of, uh, you know, uh, hitting our limits to make it so that we don't have to use so many extracts to create our overlay. And uh, we're basically, all we need to do is give it a suitable name. Uh, put in your email address, make sure it's a valid one because you do get emailed the link to download your extract once it's ready to download. Um, if you put in, obviously, a fake email address or something, you will not receive your email and you won't uh, be emailed a notification of when your extract is ready for you to get. So all you really do then is you press extract and you get taken through to the next screen that says, thanks, the input data looks good. It takes about two to seven minutes to extract an area, blah, blah, blah. Now, as I said, you will get emailed a link to download your extract once it's ready, but you'll also uh, be able to keep an eye on this page if you want to. Now, I'm surprised that this page here isn't available at the beginning of the process because there are some occasions where the area that you're wanting to extract has already been extracted by somebody else and will be in the ready extracts list. So what I would recommend is the first time you create um, an extract using this website, Bookmark the page that you used for creating the extract and bookmark this page. And whenever you come to make an extract, make sure that it's not already being used. Uh, sorry, that it hasn't already been generated because obviously that would be a waste of time and resources on the part of this service here. And obviously those uh, resources aren't um, um, unlimited. And obviously that's what causes uh, queues and stuff like that. Like That's what this bit here is for. The waiting extract section is when this area is being, you know, abused and obviously uh, they need to create a queue to make sure that the extracts can be done efficiently and um, you know there's no issues um, with the results that people get. But uh, if you look at the areas here that are around the world, if you like to hi highlight uh, any of the areas on this list, um, it takes you to where that area is. So uh, somebody's obviously doing something for this area right now, taking a little extract here from the, the west side of the United States on the coast there. Very nice. There's some people covering the east coast. There's a lot of extracts happening at, at the moment here. Obviously our one here is the, the one that we just did for France, the red one there. That's ours. Uh, obviously we'll be able to see that by just highlighting over here. And there it is. Um, and basically it, the, our request will stay in the running extract section until it's ready and then we'll receive an email. If you want, you can just keep refreshing this page, like that. And um, when the extract is ready, it will move from the running extracts area to the ready extracts area. And obviously, as long as you remember what you called it, we called ours West France, we will um, be able to download it from this list uh, once, once it's ready. But as I said, you will get an email to the email address that you provided. There'll be a link there. You just basically copy and paste the link into your um, your browser and it will download the file for you. Obviously, the bigger the, the file, the longer it'll take to download, as you probably already know. Make sure that you save it somewhere sensible because you're going to need to find it in order to get WXP to do its job uh, and creating the overlay for your x sim. Okay guys, so you've received your email and you've downloaded your PBF file with all the OSM data that's going to be used to create your scenery within Xplane. It's now a case of getting the world to Xplane application downloaded and running so that that PBF file can be read so that your overlay can be created. And this is where you find that uh, application right here. World to, world to Xplane uh, 0.7.4.1. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the version I'm using right now. And... Um, I will put this link, as I will the uh, OSM Extracts website link, I will put them both down into the description of the video below. Uh, but basically it's very simple here, uh, I would read the um, requirements here and make sure that you have Java 7 installed, you just basically click on that link, choose the appropriate version and install it. If you do not have Java running, you'll not be able to extract the program from the archive that it comes in, as it comes in the form of a uh, TAR file. Like, uh, which is uh, uh, something to do with Java. It requires Java to run. I don't really know the ins and outs of it. But once that, once that is downloaded, you basically open it up and it looks a bit like this. You double click this, it will extract. And it's just basically a case of extracting it into the correct place. Uh, you 
follow the, I won't do it just now because I've already got it installed. I would like to cancel, yes. But follow the instructions on the screen. Uh, obviously extract the program into the folder that you would like it to be extracted to. And it looks something like this. I've put mine in a, a folder that I have called W2XP. I've got it. I've got separate folders for the PBFs and I've got a separate folder for the application itself. And as I said, the contents of the application folder looks a little bit like this. Now, there are a number of things regarding configuration um, settings and well to explain throughout the entire process of using the program. Now, there is a manual included with this um, utility. It's a very good manual. Everything, as far as I'm aware, is pretty much up to date. I don't think I've come across anything that's made me go, oh, wait a minute, that's not how it's done anymore. I'm pretty sure everything is up to date. It's a pretty good manual. And it's really good for getting, like, if you go into the... Uh, if you go into the text files for the profiles that you're building your overlay with, uh, some of the um, t oops, some of the terms like smart exclusions and forest exclusion range and all these other things might be a little bit kind of weird sounding to you, but they come with definitions, which is great. So this is a really, really good way of learning how to manipulate W2XP creation uh, profile parameters. Um, so it's, it's a very good way to learn what all those terms mean. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit to do with the uh, the profiles later on. Um, but what I'll do is I'll take you straight into the configuration settings file because for me, uh, it took me a little while to realize that I was doing this uh, correctly, but I was actually executing the program incorrectly. But I'll explain that in a second. This is the world to explain uh, configurations file or world to explain .ini file. Um, now, when you first download and extract the archive, it will look different from this. It will look it will look similar, but it w but the like uh, it, there won't be quite so many rows, and there'll be slightly different information in different places. Um, that's like the the default configuration for this program. One thing I should say is when you first run or first extract, sorry, a well to explain, it is limited to um, using uh, two hundred and fifty six megabytes of RAM. Now, as you can imagine, that's not a lot of memory, and believe me, it increases the amount of time it takes to build a tile considerably. For a start, uh, you would be forced to use the local storage mode, which already slows down the process, because 256 megabytes of RAM for an overlay file that may take perhaps eight or 900 megabytes of hard drive space, uh, what'll happen is what W2XP will run out of memory to be able to use, and uh, it will just either crash or stop the process. And then you'll have to start creating your overlay again. The way you get around this is by using local storage mode, which is what I'll show you later on, and it essentially allows the hard drive to act as a buffer. So it stops the process from stopping, but the only problem is it takes significantly longer to build an overlay using the hard drive than it does just in your RAM. So this is the parameters that you use, that um, sorry, that are used, that tell Java to run world to explain using a, like a specific um, amount of memory. Now, the two lines that are the most important, and you'll see this in the, in the manual as well, the two lines that are the most important are these two here, uh, vmars.2, um, and then you've got this xms12g, which is essentially telling Java to use a minimum of 12 gigabytes of RAM for this application. So if you, even if you're not using, see, let's just imagine the program is open in RAM, sorry, in, in your PC, it will immediately take 12 gig of RAM. Now, the, the application won't necessarily be obviously using all that 12 gig of RAM, but it has reserved it for any tasks that it is obviously called upon to do when you actually start to build an overlay because it's quite a RAM intensive um, uh, procedure, I guess, to, I could say. The procedure is quite RAM intensive, and of course, the more you have, the quicker you can get it done. The XMX12G is uh, to use a maximum of 12 gig of RAM. So essentially what's happening is uh, I've told Java to use no less and no more than 12 gig of RAM whilst I'm using this program. If you wanted to, you could put in different numbers. You could go no less than 8 gig of RAM. Whoops. No less than 8 gig of RAM and no more than 12 gig of RAM. If you don't have a lot of memory, maybe you want to limit it to 2. And 2 maximum if you wanted to. It's entirely up to yourself. I'll just keep it at 12 because I have 16 gig of RAM in my system. I wish I had 32, but I have 16. 
and I like to set it at 12 and it's, you know, it works for me. So uh, what I'll do is in the description of this video, I will copy and paste this entire thing for you down below the description. Just copy and paste it into your version of this configuration file, this one here. And, um, and obviously change the numbers. I mean, if you have 64 gig of RAM in your system and you want to use 32 of that for this application, then put 32 in here and then save it and then run the application and you can have bragging rights on me. It'll be great. Um, oops, I've uh, made a boo-boo there. If you don't, and obviously you have uh, like not as much RAM, maybe you have, maybe you're doing this on a laptop with four gig of memory or something, you can bring those numbers down to make sure that you're not obviously using all the RAM that your system has to offer. It's entirely up to yourself what you do, what you do with this, but this is an incredibly important thing uh, to be able to get set up uh, because um, for a long time um, I was having problems getting this to work and uh, I was limited to, to my, um, my program only using 256 megabytes of RAM and I had to use local storage mode and it took ages to build any overlays. And then I worked, then I worked out how this actually works properly. Uh, and then my, my, my overlays are done in like about a 10th of the time. It's fantastic. Anyway, once you've got your, uh, your setup file, sorry, your configuration settings file sorted, uh, you need to make sure that you're running the correct executable. Now I used to run this one and I and I wondered, mm, wait a minute, why am I only limited to three and a half gig of RAM? It's almost as if Java's telling this application to use only three and a half gig, like a 32-bit application. But I want Java to run this like a 64-bit application. Hmm. And then I used to go back into into this here and change things and make sure I saved it properly and made sure everything was right according to the manual and it was all perfect and I could never change that. I then realized that I was using the the wrong exe. You need to use this one. You open this one up and it peeks into your configuration settings file like you already uh, that, that you already changed and it gets the settings from there. Whereas the other, this one here, doesn't look into the configurations file. It has its own settings that just, you know, it doesn't do what it's told. It just does whatever it wants. Whereas this one does what it's told. So make sure you're using this one here uh, when using this application to make sure that your configuration file is being read. And if you have allocated any more than three and a half gig of RAM to your application, that it is using it. Always best to check that. So we're now in world to X plane. Uh, first thing we need to do is tell it which file we're going to use, right? So, um, yeah, so this is the, the generation screen. Uh, you got your OSMPBF file, which is in this, obviously, you put the URL in here, you just hit browse, you find where your PBFs are located, mine's is here, I hit open, done. Now, I don't hit start yet, because there's a number of other things that I want to check out and make sure are correct first. We're going to go to the advanced screen, and you're going to see the... Uh, just some advanced information. The top one here is a configuration file. Now, the, I know it's called configuration file, but it's not this one. Okay, it's not this one. It's actually the one in the resources thing. Now, the world to explain comes with a number of uh, configurations and they look a little bit like this. Now, this is the part in um, the world to explain where people start to flip tables and just give up on it. Because, you know, that looks like code. And if you don't code, it's intimidating. And it's a pain in the ass. And I don't code. I hate coding. I, I, I don't hate it. I just don't, I don't find any enjoyment out of it. But eventually, when you actually start to read what's happening here, there's enough English, like, kind of a uh, dummy guide, like, definitions going on here to tell you what each section does. So this bit here, enable OSM 3D true. And it tells you up here what it does. Create models for OSM 3D models and building parts. Well, you want that because you want your, your, your buildings to be completely 3D on your overlay. Stuff like clipping trees out of an airport, true. So basically, wherever there is an aerodrome uh, signified in the OSM data, with W2XP will not put trees in there. Same with um, roads here. And, um, you know, there's just, again, there's a ton of stuff. It's a big file. Uh, this is the HD one. So this is the profile that I think the guys, um, sim, you know, the guys, the Sim Heaven scenery. I'm pretty sure this is the profile that they use. Um, and it has everything. It has, you know, houses, roads, trees, gondolas, 
uh, you know, ski lift thingies, I think. Uh, and it has, you know, garden fences and telephone booths and bus stop. It has a lot of stuff in here. And of course, all of these, um, all, all of those things can be manipulated if you just find the relevant section. So take this here, street lights at a distance of 40 meters. In residential areas, in high, like, uh, you can choose the density of them. Um, uh, same with the likes of, I'm pretty sure there's a, a highway track area. Yeah, here. Um, again, like a lot of it's still kind of very foreign to me and I can't, I, I can't really think straight when it comes to this kind of thing unless I'm actually just focusing on it and not making a video. Telephone boxes stuff, you know, do you want them on or not? Uh, if you don't, you just delete that entire thing. If you do, there's a few parameters there that you can change. Um, forest densities, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff, you get it, right? There's also a couple of other um, uh, configuration files that look very similar, uh, but they they have been made specifically for a specific purpose. So if you only want buildings and you don't want roads or anything, there's your profile. If you If you only want forests, there's your profile. And if you just want uh, something that has a bit of everything, but not quite as hardcore as the HD one, you have your basic config, which is this one here, which is significantly smaller, although it doesn't look like it. And um, it's uh, a little bit easier on the FPS. I myself have made my own. It's almost the same as the config HD ones, except the trees are more dense. Uh, I have street lights on more uh, types of roads that's more accurate to the real world. So, you know, not all roads have street lights. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the roads that do have them and the roads that don't, don't have them. So I made that distinction in my profile. I also changed a couple of things in relation to um, building types. There's a couple of things in here that you can use uh, that limits the, n the numbers of types of buildings within a set of assets that you have downloaded in your libraries. Um, the reason why this is a good thing to limit is because obviously if there are less buildings being called for your overlay, uh, that takes up less RAM. Uh, and so uh, it can increase your FPS. I'm on about video memory here. Uh, it can increase your FPS and the performance of your sim a little bit because there's less assets stored in memory. However, if you go, I want all the variety of buildings I can get so that it's as close to the real world as I as I can get it, then obviously there's going to be more assets loaded into RAM at any one time and it could impact on the performance of your sim. Again, it's entirely up to yourself how you use this, but they're the amendments that I've made to my file. So I just thought I would show you the configuration files, the fact that th this software is very, very customizable and you can really make your own custom overlays exactly the way you want them if you just had the patience to sit down with these profiles and just change the bits that you want to. Obviously, like referencing the manual and, of course, the the green text dummy guide that's in the configuration file to keep yourself right. It's easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I hate this kind of coding and reading lots and lots of like stuff that needs to be run in the program. But, you know, I sat with it for an entire afternoon and I was like, oh, okay, this isn't quite so hard. I know exactly what I want to do with this. And then I made my profile, it worked, and now I have my overlays. In fact, we're going to be using that very profile for this exercise. So we looked at the config file. Uh, we're now on to the xplane main directory. And, of course, that's very self-explanatory, the root directory of where xplane is. So, browse. Uh, uh, for me, it's in Steam. So, uh, Steam, apps, common... Explain 10, open, done, sorted. Poly files for exclusions, I don't use those, I never have. It does say in the manual what they're used for and where you can get them, but I haven't looked into that at all. It's not at all necessary to actually use the program though. So we're gonna move on. Number of processor instances at um, this uh, controls uh, how many, if I'm not mistaken, how many cores are used in your processor to create the tiles and in the uh, for your overlay? Uh, the more instances you use, obviously, the faster the overlay gets built. However, it can make the program somewhat unstable. Uh, I would recommend that if you are doing any more than one processor instance, that you have a buttload of RAM, uh, because uh, the amount of RAM that would be required to run one instance when creating your overlay is then doubled 
I think it's doubled. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I managed to c count it so that it's doubled um, if you use two, and of course tripled if you use three. Uh, so I, I tend to keep it on one because I'm not usually at my PC when I'm letting these things burn away, and so if anything does go wrong and I'm using too many instances and it crashes, I'll, I won't know until I get back to my PC, in which case I've wasted hours. Where if I just leave it at one where I know it works perfectly well, it will burn away when I come back, I'll have a new overlay. It's, it's a lot more stable that way. The final tab is the log tab. Uh, quite an important tab, this. I know it's empty right now, but once we actually start building the overlay, you'll see how much information it can give you. It essentially gives you step-by-step real-time commentary of what's going on. So when uh, buildings and assets are getting placed, road networks are getting created, if there are any errors, it'll tell you what they are. If there's anything that stops the process, like let's say, for example, you get a little pop-up dialogue that says, couldn't build overlay, please check the log file. Uh, that's what it will say. Uh, you look to the log file and it will tell you exactly in English, you know, not, there's little to no jargon in there, but in English it will tell you exactly what's wrong. And then you go, oh crap, ah. I know how to fix that, or if I don't know how to fix that, I can look at a forum, and then you'll be able to fix it yourself. It's really quite a very, it's a good feature. Keep an eye on the log, if anything goes wrong, it will save your ass and save you from wasting a buttload of time wondering what the problem is with your overlay settings. So, there we go. Uh, that is the World to X Play software. What we're going to do now is build an overlay. Um, so we've got our file set up there. Uh, this is the uh, the PBF file that we uh, obviously downloaded before. I'll just make sure of that. Uh, World to explain PBFs West France. There we go. Open. Brilliant. We'll go to the advanced section and we'll make sure that we are using the correct file. Yeah, Ali's file. If, of course, the, you have the wrong file in there and you want to use a different one for your, your the profile in which you're using to create the overlay, just press browse, go to resources here and choose the file. If you're wanting to use the default HD one, click on that, click open. Look, it's the config HD one now. I myself will go to mine. I like mine. Open. Fantastic. And now we're ready to go. We go back to the generation screen. You hit start and it will start. Oh, before I do that, I will sh I will tell you this. Uh, I mentioned local storage earlier. Before we actually start building this, I want to give you a little bit of context here. As I said, if you don't have a lot of memory in your system, it's unlikely that you'll be able to actually build a tile unless it's a very small area or a very small PBF file that you're dealing with to create the overlay. It's very unlikely that you'll be able to create uh, an overlay using world to explain without this being ticked. Because if you run out of RAM, uh, the, the process will just stop. It'll say, run out of memory to complete the overlay, or whatever the hell it says in the log. I've forgotten exactly what it says. But it says something along the lines of, uh, run out of memory, uh, please increase memory, or use um, local storage. Now, if you wanted to increase the memory and you did actually have the physical memory in your PC to increase it, then you could just go back to your configuration file and change the number to something bigger if you wanted to. If, however, you don't, what you'll need to do is hit use local storage and your hard drive will act as a buffer um, for all the stuff that's required to uh, be dealt with by this program to create your overlay. Now, I will warn you, it takes a long time to build an overlay using storage mode if you're using a big file. Anything over the likes of 500 meg, you're talking hours. I'll give you a little bit of context here. I did the Netherlands in uh, one go using one PBF file. The, f the size of the file was 736 megabytes. Using local storage mode, that I had to leave my PC on overnight. It took me 17 hours to create that overlay using local storage mode and one processor instance. However, when I realized how I could actually get this program to look for the amount of memory I was wanting it to use and managed to get it up to 12 gig, it now takes me less than one hour. So that just gives you a bit of an idea as to how much faster you can get stuff done if you have the memory and, and you're not using local storage mode. For hours, obviously, we're going to turn off local storage mode and uh, hit start. But it's quite amazing how much faster it is just doing it in RAM, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite, it's, it blew me away when I first built an overlay using it, just using, uh, sorry, turning off the local storage function. It was crazy. So we're going to hit start, and what will happen is the log will start populating, and it's already assigned the output folder. The output folder, um, I don't think you can change this, but the output folder is always going to be in the same place as where your PBF file is located. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, my PBF file for West France, there we go, there's output folder. That wasn't there before. 
and that was the file there that that um that that we're using for our our uh, our overlay here. So at least you'll always know that your output folder, your overlay, when it's ready to be copied into your custom scenery folder, if you do decide to copy it and not just use a shortcut, you know exactly where it is to, to actually copy it from. Uh, so here we go, we're on the first path, step one of five, indexing the OSM file. Uh, there's five steps to this, I can't remember the name of all of them, but after the five steps are completed, you'll get a grid that comes up. And the grid um, is essentially a representation of all the tiles that you are creating an overlay for. And they will, one by one, um, you know, they will, they will uh, there's like a kind of a, like a loading bar, I guess you could say, in each of them. And they will one by one complete uh, as each tile OSM data is built. And then when it's finished, your overlay is complete. And then, of course, it's ready to be used in your sim. Now, as I said before, installing the overlay to your sim is actually really very easy. It's like installing anything else into your custom scenery. You put it into your custom scenery folder and um, you make sure that it is in the correct place on your scenery.ini file, or if you use xorganizer, you make sure that it's in the correct category of, um, of uh, you know, because X Organizer has a number of categories to do with uh, scenery and photo scenery and overlays and airports and all that kind of stuff. Make sure that you have it in the W2XP category, which is uh, its own category within X Organizer. And then it's just a case of uh, closing X Organizer and opening up your sim and it will work perfectly fine for you. And when you do have all that done, your overlay will look a little bit like this. Now, as you can see, uh, the obviously we, we looked at this at the beginning of the video. It was, there was no buildings, there was no roads, there was nothing except from the assets for our airport. There was nothing at all. And now we have everything. We have roads, we have junctions, we have buildings of different varieties, whether they be like suburban house style things or big skyscraping business building things. We also have transportation, so uh, you know the roads give us cars, the railway gives us trains, uh, of course if there are any bridges they are built uh, to obviously cross a, a, a body of water. Um, it's essentially transformed our ortho scenery into a living landscape, which is uh, for me uh, significantly more immersive a simulation experience and just having the 2D plane, especially when you are at a lower altitude, perhaps coming in for an approach on a runway. Once you get down to about a thousand feet, you start to realize that everything that looked 3D from a little bit higher up, without buildings, uh, is just a flat texture and it kind of, kind of wrecks your immersion just a little bit. But having an overlay like this, investing the time if you actually want to create your own configuration file, uh, configuration profile, should I say, for your overlay, investing the time to get that right and really fine tune it for your needs and wants, it, it pays off like heaps, heaps and tons. And the fact that the configuration file is fully editable and of course allows you to completely customize it for your, like, uh, you know, the, the limitations of your hardware, so maybe eliminating some kinds of assets to make sure that the FPS is still uh, high enough to be able to fly a plane properly or maybe you don't want to see anything to do with roads you can just eliminate roads from your overlay and just use the ones that are on the ortho scenery you know you have you have a lot of control here and if you just take that control and maybe take an afternoon or so to read through the manual a little bit and then reference the manual whilst reading through the configuration profiles you can really do some pretty amazing things to your sim using this program so there you have it. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, uh, feel free to give it a like and perhaps share it with a friend who would also find it just as useful. I want to give a shout out to the Game With subscribers who of course support me in creating the content, enabling me to obviously make it as often as I do. A big shout out to them. Thank you so much for your support. If of course you're not yet a Game With subscriber and you would like to at all be involved in funding future content for this channel, there's a link down below the stream. And there's a little bit of reading that can inform you as to exactly what Game Wisp is and how it can benefit you. But overall, as I said, I hope you like the video and you have found it useful. And if you did like the video, feel free to hit the thumbs up to the bottom right. And of course, if you have anybody who could benefit from this, feel free to share the video with them too. If you'd like to see the kind of material and content I come out with in the future, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And until I see you again, 
Stay healthy, stay happy, and take care. Goodbye.